Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Good, how are you? How about now? Is that any better? Nope. 
muted in sound levels. Oh, hold on. Here. Hold on. I think I found it. How about now? Yay. Can Yay. you hear me? All right. So I think, um, so I think um, everything I said was just, just now, <laughs> which is fantastic. <laughs> Great start to a new season, but yep. we're back. Uh, we're here yep. with episode one and we have fabulous news for you. And um, I hope you all had a awesome festive season, uh, are rested and ready for more recipe magic. How about you, yep. Richie? I am ready for that. And uh, the, the funny thing is, is uh, of course, first episode, there's going to be all sorts of problems. We have the audio problems. Uh, I, I had the lighting, I was using natural light, and it was all set up for an overcast day, and of course, as soon as the show goes live, the sun comes out, and I'm like, <laughs> way bright. <laughs> You're shining so, bright uh, like a diamond, Richie. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, so of course, great. you know, that would be, hopefully the clouds cover the sun again, and I yes. turn a regular color of yellow, I guess, you know. Mm. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, such is life and yep. life. And um, yeah, nonetheless, uh, we are rip roaring, uh, ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe some people in the audience may have an inkling already. Who knows? Uh, maybe some subscribers of yours have an idea of what's about to happen. Uh, but be that as it may, um, if you're new to the show or if you're tuning in later or um, if you possibly haven't read uh, the news on Richie's blog, can we put you out of your misery and um, make the announcement of the day? Are you yep. all ready? This is the moment you've been waiting for. Yes, it is. And here we go. <laughs> We have a new recipe, and it's called McCurry Kodachrome. Uh, nope. We will be talking to you about this recipe in a bit more detail, and um, can't wait to wait to get this going. Are yep. you, and, uh, Richie, ready to share everything that you have to share with us? For today. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about with this particular recipe. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, All righty, let's dive right into it. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Um, and then we came into a great big black hole. That's not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, just uh, just to chat about it while we figure out the the screen here. Um, yeah, so Steve McCurry obviously famously photographed uh, using Kodachrome 64. He was, if you don't know who he is, he was on the cover of National Geographic a lot. Very famous photographer, uh, still is. And uh, and he was the very last person to to shoot Kodachrome and have it developed. So, um, you know, uh, this recipe is intended to mimic uh, his photographs uh, shot using uh, Kodachrome 64, particularly the very last roll that he shot. Now we're back here. So, uh, yeah, so we got a lot of uh, technical troubles today, but that's, of course, the, the what happens when you do a live broadcast. You never know what gremlins... Uh, we actually ran through all this uh, yesterday and it worked fine. And then, of course, today, little things happen here and there. But, uh, you know, I'm really, I've been shooting with the uh, McCurry Kodachrome recipe for about two months now. And it's been a pleasure to shoot with. It's it's kind of like shooting with the film. Uh, and, and you really have to be, with slide film, it has a very narrow dynamic range. So uh, you have to be very careful. Um, with your exposure and stuff. But it looks like we got everything worked out and we're ready to move on. Maybe. No, we're not. Or maybe not. No, maybe not. Um, sorry, we are trying something new um, and it's clearly not working. Uh, we had a couple of um, technical problems because we try to bring uh, to you a better quality um, video and 
um, that just chewed up my computer. And um, so we tried something different and we had it running just now, but then obviously we did the pre-show and now it lost us. It left us. We don't know where our beautiful slides have gone. Um, so, well, yeah. Well, I guess we could talk about it, you know, we can, you know, so we don't have any slides, like from this point forward, there's nothing, nothing to show. Is that correct? Well, anyways, uh, I hope you guys are doing well out there and, and thanks for, uh, tuning in, even sticking with us through all these, uh, little troubles here and there and. Um, of course, this is the issue you always have when you do when you do live. So, uh, so the film simulation recipe was developed by uh, Anders Lindborg, who has created a number of recipes before, including the Kodak Triax 400 recipe, which is my personal favorite film simulation recipe. I use it all the time. Anders is such a incredible resource for. <laughs> Here we are again. Uh, he's such an incredible resource for for how film works and, and Fujifilm camera settings and all that stuff. And he's developed a very, uh, a very uh, intricate way of developing film simulation recipes. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of research. It takes a lot of uh, uh, scientific processes and that kind of stuff. And, um, and then a lot of, obviously a lot of testing and, uh, and Anders along with John Savini created the McCurry Kodachrome recipe together. And they're very happy to share it with all you guys and, um, and make it public to everyone. And, and that was their goal from the beginning. Um, and I just want to say thank you to Anders. I believe he's joining us today. Uh, he was in the uh, previous show. So please, he's here. Oh, it looks like we got it. Yes, we do. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm really sorry, first of all, to not have um, any visuals and then to you, Richie, to leave you hanging um, and to kind of like, um, pre um, empt everything that we <laughs> have prepared. <laughs> but um, yeah, such is, sh such is life and such is um, live streaming and that's just how it goes. Nonetheless, uh, we have valuable information um, to share with you and we will, you know, we will run through this now. Yeah. So, um, so this was basically a test to make sure that you have all your facts straight, Richie. <laughs> and now um, for some pretty pictures to go with it. Um, if yeah. I overheard you correctly, you've kind of like uh, been diving into this um, here and there a little bit um, already. Just a little bit. Yeah, so um, Kodachrome was introduced by Kodak in 1935. That's when they first started making it. And it was the world's first reasonably accurate color film. Yes, but that was only the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so there's three distinct eras of Kodachrome. Uh, the first was 1935 to 1960. Uh, the second era is 1961 to 1973. And then the third and final era is 1974 to when it was discontinued in 2009. Yes, a very sad day for the world uh, when we saw uh, the beautiful Kodachrome disappear uh, from um, everywhere. But... Um, this is not the main focus. Um, what was brilliant was that Kodachrome 64 was introduced in 74. And this is kind of like, yep. you know, where we are um, wanting to begin the story uh, for, the, for our back uh, story for this recipe. Yes. <laughs> because none other than um, Steve McCurry, I'm not sure if you mentioned it already. He was the one who got the privilege to shoot the last roll of Kodachrome. And yep. this is... Very famously. Yes, very famously. And this is the end of um, the end of the Kodachrome film era. But yeah, because, the, because Kodachrome <laughs> was such a unique film, it had a very uh, specific process that was only for Kodachrome. And so when Kodak discontinued the film, they also discontinued the, the chemicals needed to develop the film. And I think um, if I have my facts straight or did enough research, it was especially the chemicals that were the biggest problem in all of this. 
because they were so toxic and it was um, the the development process was so difficult that it was just not standing um, the you know changes of times and digital coming along um, was just the one hour photo lab was happening so it was just no longer viable um, for Kodachrome to be developed in its traditional yes. way. Um, yeah, so it was Steve McCurry who shot the last 36 frames of Kodachrome, and this is one of his images. Um, you can go check out um, an actual documentary that was made by National Geographic, and um, another link that we are also sharing in the comments, uh, where you can look at all the different frames that he actually took with that film and catch up a little bit on the more of the backstory of this. But I think um, there is a reason why we are uh, wanting to, you know, when we delved into all of this, and, you know, you've heard it while we were all looking at this big black hole in front of us, <laughs> is because this was exactly the inspiration um, that got Anders and um, John going to develop um, a recipe. Yes. And this is when you know it all begins to get interesting for us and the future that um started today <laughs> yeah and they and they really put in a lot of research they they carefully studied each individual frame that uh that steve captured you can find them online there's a doc whole documentary about it again that's on youtube and uh they they really like very very carefully studied it and john uh is such a talented and experienced photographer uh he's you know taught many courses in colleges and so forth on photography um so and then and then anders is just his own genius you know so uh, between the two of them they they were able to really nail down the look based off of those 36 frames of kodachrome it's pretty amazing um you shared a post uh, towards the end of last year on your blog where you explained a little bit what kind of a process can go into creating a recipe. And it's very technical, it's very involved. If you haven't read it yet, you can go uh, check out um, the link that we will post in the comments about it. It's really intricate. And if you want to do it properly, which is uh, what they set out to do because uh, yes, it's the honoring of Kodachrome, uh, which deserves mm -hmm. a little bit of extra attention. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you can, you can catch up there. But it is not just quickly done um, in an afternoon when you are bored and don't quite know what else to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, sometimes recipes come along, you know, literally that quickly um, that on an afternoon where you're bored, you can work on it and, and figure something out and, uh, and and get a really good result. But, you know, a lot of times it is a very involved process and it doesn't come along like really quickly. And I think the more time and research you can put into it to getting it just right, the better the results are. Yes, it seems like it. And it seems like Anders and John put a huge amount of effort in, in making sure that that is correct, uh, which yes. speaks for... Um, what high quality this this recipe is and, and promises to be and you know um since i'm a little bit on the inside track of this one as well <laughs> um it it really is um wonderful not to say that the other recipes that i've shot with aren't uh, but i don't know how much time goes into those but with this one you know knowing how how much dedication and technical knowledge is required um, deserves a special mention. Um, yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. So, um, yeah, but, um, and I must apologize because I'm not sure if you have mentioned it. It got a little bit heated here behind the scenes for a second or two. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm not sure, but um, it is a very happy moment, but also a little bit sad uh, because uh, towards the end of the process, um, John, who was the uh, one of the driving forces behind this recipe, he passed away um, in November last year. Yeah, no November 9th, he had a massive stroke and passed away, sadly. So 
it's it's really too bad. Uh, I I had many conversations with uh, John on Instagram on you know through DMs and stuff, and he was very helpful to me and always offering some good feedback. Um, he was he was the kind of person who could uh, really lay it out uh, how you're doing something wrong, but say it in a kind way that you knew he was very genuine. <laughs> So, so yeah, I, John will definitely be missed. And, um, and so he, he had a big hand in this McCurry Kodachrome and it's, uh, uh, he was working on a photo book and it was about to be published just before he passed away. And a lot of the pictures in that photo book were captured with this recipe. And it's, it's just really, uh, it was just really sad that, um, that he had that stroke and is no longer with us. So. John will be missed. Yes, and it is um, in honor of him uh, that we are, you know, doing this. It is. Yes. It makes just everything um, a little bit more important uh, to get it right. So, sorry, John, if you saw the beginning of the show, we apologize profusely. <laughs> But I think we got it now. So while we're in the flow of things, yeah. um, uh, John was working with Anders, who is watching. Uh, so yeah. thanks to Anders who put huge amount of effort into this as well to get this um, baby birthed. Yeah. And, um, and, and th definitely thank you, Anders, for, for not only joining us today, but for all the work you put into this and for, you know, sharing it with everybody and, and being such a great part of this community and, and all that. So uh, just a round of applause, everybody, to Anders. I, I know we can't really... <laughs> Do a round of applause, but, you know, hey, uh, Anders deserves a lot of, a lot of praise for, for this recipe and, and so does John and, and, uh, we're just really honored to be able to share it. Yes, it's, it's phenomenal. And, um, I feel honored to, uh, be part of this as well. And I think now that we have caught up with the backstory and are in the swing of things, uh, we can have a look at some of the sample images that we've prepared for you so that you get an insight of the look um, that uh, you will get from McCurry Kodachrome. So this is an image, uh, one of the images that Anders shared with us um, that he shot, which is, you know, clearly... Um, after it's been properly tested and developed because this is uh, really an excellent photograph. Yeah, and you can see, when you look at this picture, you can see the similarities between his and Steve McCurry's images. Yeah, so you are more than welcome to um, take a screenshot of this and then go and look at um, the last role of um, Steve McCurry's images, uh, you will find them online and you can compare of the, the qualities. Um, there we have um, another one of um, Anders's images. Uh, really uh, quite spectacular scenes <laughs> that we um, can witness here, which is really awesome. And this is only the beginning. And it's nice that um, Anders shared these people photographs uh, because... It's also, you know, what Steve McCurry um, firstly captures mostly, I think, these days also still anyway. And he decided that with the last role of Kodachrome, he also wanted to shoot portraits. Um, it's interesting to see his creative process. And so to see people in this, I think, is really cool. And um, yeah, and, and there are some images that we shot as well. So uh, let's hop into uh, checking those out. I can see some awesome blue coming your way. Um, yeah, and so this one, uh, just this old barn, you can, I love the, how the, the, uh, the greens in it are rendered. And uh, uh, I guess those greens of summer that, uh, that are in the song, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you That's see a little, how, the, how the yellows in the in the barn and the blue sky and and you just uh, it really does feel like the slide, you know, a slide of Kodachrome when you when you see this picture. Yes, and and you you look at the sky and you're like, yep, that's Kodachrome. So that's yep. uh, a really nice common thread that we've got in this recipe, 
and um, others who came that came before it. Um, mm -hmm. Listen to me, I'm talking to a recipe like it's a person. <laughs> Really. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so so this is definitely one of the qualities that you will will get um, when shooting uh, with it in landscapes. Um, here, I shot with it um, in a in a city scene, uh, which also is um, it's a very different light quality. You will see this was in winter, obviously. So um, the blues that it brings out are um, you know even just a little bit more blue and um, really, really nice. And um, yeah, and so we, we go on to the next. Uh, yeah, it, it, so this one's great because it has all these different colors in it and you can really see how it is, but it also shows what it does when photographing in shade, you know, and it's not like direct sunlight or, or anything like that. So. Uh, it gives you a, a different idea of what what it could render just depending on the light. Yes, and obviously this is, I said to Richie when I saw this picture for the first time, it's like your perfect color checker chart <laughs> <laughs> picture <laughs> because all the, all the uh, important colors are represented and it gives you a really nice idea of what you, what you get. On a side note here, these images that we are showing, we have selected um, mostly by the qualities that we want to um, point out of the recipe. Mm -hmm. So they are not necessarily uh, the greatest images that we've shot with them, but we feel that the combination of the images that we are showing um, showcases the breadth of uh, what the recipe delivers. So keep that in mind when you, when you look at the pictures. I don't know. Was that a disclaimer? <laughs> <Not sure. laughs> I mean, these aren't necessarily our best pictures, but they're <laughs> ones that illustrate the recipe well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, I shot an image here in indoors after I had, you know, gone and taken some pictures uh, with this recipe in the, you know, safe areas outside in the sun and uh, daylight, I thought, let me take it, you know, step by step, challenge it a little bit more and take it indoors and see what it does. So in indoor daylight, um, you know, the, the daylight being the important part, it um, renders beautifully. I uh, chose this picture. I think I chose to take this picture because of the red wall in the background, um, okay. just to show yeah. how, how nice and, and deep and saturated um, that becomes uh, with this recipe, um, but something you know very different. So it's not only a landscape recipe. But having said that, it is really good for landscapes. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, this is obviously the Grand Canyon, a, a morning shot, and you can see how it uh, you know, it has a lot of similarities to some slides that I've captured many years ago at the Grand Canyon, uh, I think back in 2000. So, uh, you know, I really appreciated how it looked and how it has this analog uh, rendering, um, this classic Kodak slide film rendering. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, there's not any like specific color that necessarily pops out in this, like illustrate the reds or the yellows or the blues or whatever, but it's just as a whole, it looks like a slide. Yeah, absolutely. I think this this image has the qualities of, um, you know, analog look, and having this monumental landscape um, as the subject, I think, adds to it, adds to the depth of it, and shot in beautiful golden hour light, um, it obviously adds to that as well. So, I think um, that this. This image, which I think is your, your kind of like your leading image for the recipe mm -hmm. also, um, is, you know, just telling you everything you need to know about the recipe. <laughs> so very well done um, on this one. And now for something completely different, I took it to the streets in the evening to see uh, what it does. Or more like, 
Well, I was out in the evening anyway, so I took a couple of pictures at night and thought, let's see. <laughs> and um, I saw this, and I think it's really nice. It's obviously very warm, um, the image, but I love the, the quality um, that it gives the image. So I'm quite happy with it, and I'm quite happy to say, well, yeah, I'll take it to the streets in the evening and shoot with it then as well. I don't know what yeah, the expert says. Well, the, the one thing you do have to be careful about with this recipe and you have to pay very close attention to is the highlights because of the uh, camera setting. It very much mimics the film. The film had a very narrow dynamic range and you had to be very precise with your exposure, not to overexpose it and lose your highlights, not to underexpose it and have deep, dark shadows, but to, to really nail it right on. And I think this film simulation recipe is similar. You got to pay very close attention to those highlights and, and, and be careful with your exposures. Yes, definitely needing to be careful if you want um, highlights not to blow out in your image. Maybe someone says, oh, I don't mind. <laughs> they go wild. But yep. if you want to rein them in, then you need to keep an eye on that. And those are the, the samples that, uh, that we have for you. Um, I think... You know, they showcase the, the qualities really nicely. And just as a, as a summary of what this recipe will give you, um, you know, so, we, we've so just to a, a few points. Yeah, and just to, uh, to clarify, I already have a Kodachrome 64 film simulation recipe. And you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between that and McCurry Kodachrome since they're both based off of the same film? And yes. just a quick explanation... Thank is you. that, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Kodachrome is probably, because of the unique process, it's been said that it's the most difficult film to scan of all of them. Uh, it often will have a very strong blue cast when you scan it, and it has to be color correct. And, of course, some scanners will do it automatically and have profiles, but it's a very difficult one to get completely correct, and it'll turn blue. And so scanned Kodachrome often has at least a little bit more of a blue uh, cast to it than uh, Kodachrome that's being projected through a slide projector or on a light table. And of course, that's even affected by the bulb that's in the, that's in the, the projector or, or things like that. But so the, my Kodachrome 64 film simulation recipe mimics more viewing the Kodachrome slide through a projector or on a light table, while uh, the McCurry Kodachrome recipe that was developed by Anders and John more mimics Kodachrome 64 that has been scanned and correctly color corrected um, to, to make up or to handle that blue cast appropriately. And so that's basically, they're, they're similar. They'll, they'll give you similar results, but the McCurry Kodachrome is a little bit more blue than my Kodachrome 64 film simulation recipe. That makes so much sense, Richie. Um, I was wondering all this time, and um, as uh, you will find out um, soon, is <laughs> that I, since I've been shooting with this with this recipe as well, I've um, written a blog post and I, I compared the recipes because if I'm a user and I don't know about the backstory, I'm like, why do I have so many different recipes if um, Steve McCurry shot on Kodachrome 64 surely your Kodachrome 64 recipe should be the one that we're using but as you've just explained it depends on many more um, factors so thank you for enlightening us um, that makes a heck of a lot of sense and uh, is a great um, inspiration to you know carry on shooting with all the different recipes yeah and so the mccurry kodachrome does have we just talked about a couple times does have a very narrow dynamic range and it has to be carefully exposed uh, minus three to plus three on the exposure compensation dial tends to be your friend uh just you know don't don't underexpose too much don't overexpose too much yeah um uh, use good metering techniques and stuff and uh, it's best in sunny daylight but it works great in many other situations too as you've seen in the sample pictures uh, so it's a great recipe for landscapes for outdoor for travel for 
pretty much anything for family snapshots or, or, you know, documentary photography or whatever you want to do, uh, definitely give this recipe a try. You absolutely must. Um, I can only recommend it. I totally loved shooting with it. And um, thank you, Richie, for giving me the opportunity to uh, shoot with it uh, for quite an extended period of time before the official release. This was really exciting. I loved um, having the opportunity uh, to take it elsewhere also. And um, yeah, speaking of which, uh, we both um, have blog posts uh, that have been you know, released, we are like on the, on the cusp <laughs> today. We, we are definitely cutting it fine. Everything has just been released just now. Um, maybe, you know, this is also why everything got a little bit heated just uh, before we started uh, as far as the technical um, challenges are concerned. But it's all here. We've mm -hmm. showed you the pictures. We have... Um, published uh, the new um, recipe. It's on the app already. It's also obviously on your blog. Go and read that post. It's really cool. It's got a lot of insight to it. And then also go and read my blog. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've put a lot of pictures, uh, lots of different kinds of pictures so that you can just get an idea of you know, apart from obviously the, the images where, where it shines, the beautiful sunny blue skies and greens, um, have a check um, at that and then go and test it yourself. Yep. So you can scan the, the QR codes here on the screen. If you've got your phone handy, that will take you right to the uh, blog posts. Otherwise, you know, the usual um, avenues will take you there as well. If you are not subscribed, that is. <laughs> if you are not, you know what to do next. Or otherwise, you can also go to the SOC website. The articles with links are there right now as well. So you can go there. Um, just now, as soon as um, we have completed the show. But we want to encourage you to shoot and share, as always. Um, like we said in the pre-show, we are keeping this running. We want you to uh, shoot with this recipe. We want you to share them with us. Uh, we'd love to see um, how you fare with this recipe. So we will give you three weeks uh, to shoot, i um, sure that a lot of you will grab your cameras just now and check it out. And then upload your three favorite images, as always. Uh, the link is on the website. It's also, you know, in this QR code. So go ahead and do that. Are there any more pointers that you want to give people along the way before they start loading this recipe into their cameras? No, just load it, shoot it, watch the exposure, uh, be careful for the highlights, and and uh, have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, have a it, lot of fun. It, this it is probably the closest you'll get to actually shooting with uh, Kodachrome 64 film in, nowadays. Is, is loading this recipe or the other Kodachrome 64 recipe. Uh, try both, put them both in your camera, and shoot them side by side and see what you get. And, uh, looking forward to seeing your results. Yes. It's fantastic stuff. Uh, and especially knowing all the history to it uh, just makes mm -hmm. it all the, all the more important. So I absolutely love that. And if you did as well, um, then why don't you subscribe if you haven't yet already? Uh, we do want to grow this channel. We want to keep it going. So every bit helps. Subscribe, keep up with all the notifications, everything that we are um, sending out new. Uh, we, um, you know, we will keep you updated. Check out on the website or on the socials once we are ready to, um, you know, schedule another live show. We will tell you. Otherwise, um, I think that is it from us. Yep. Well, thank you for uh, tuning in and watching us and and uh, waiting, being patient with all the technical troubles and 
um, the sound and the, the slides and, and all that stuff and, and sticking it through. And we weren't able to quite meet our goal to, to keep the show under uh, 30 minutes, but we were close. Yes. Uh, a lot. Hopefully you enjoy the shorter format and, uh, and we'll <laughs> keep working at it and uh, yeah, keep improving. It's always it's always uh, a learning experience for us, uh, but uh, it is time for us to go. Uh, so I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye, Natalie. Goodbye to all of you. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Yes. Thank you so much for um, sticking it out with us. And um, we will be with you again shortly. Enjoy this recipe. Have a lot of fun. If you have questions, send them to us in the comments. We will definitely answer them. If you've watched this as a recording, we will most certainly um, answer all your questions that you may have. And um, for now, it is goodbye also from me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Um, keep well and keep shooting awesome JPEGs. Bye-bye. Bye, Richie. Bye. Good night, and thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy the show.